Hey you guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name's Jeff and in this channel I try to help each and every one of you guys become much better investors. So today what I want to do is talk to you about my five ETF portfolio. I've made kind of a challenge this year, which is to see if I can beat the returns of the S&P 500. And that's just a market benchmark so that I can gauge whether I'm either succeeding in my mission or whether I'm failing. What I've decided to do is instead of buying individual stocks this year, I'm buying shares of ETFs and I've selected five different ETFs. I've outlined them in an earlier video and today I'm just going to update you on how well this portfolio is performing so far this year in 2023. Every month during the course of this year, at the start of the month, I'm going to put a minimum of $300 into each of these five ETFs and that's it. So each month I just make the investments and I'm just letting this grow or shrink. You know, I don't know how this is going to work out. Um, but my belief is, and this is through my own experience, that over time investing in the markets through thick and thin, and especially through thin, is really a great way to just become an owner of assets, of stocks, which is a part of companies, the part of corporations. And you become a part owner of these businesses when you own stock or own stock through ETFs or index funds. And that way, everyone from the person working on the factory floor, assembling cars or building this or that, working on, you know, manufacturing all the way right up to the CEO of the company, they're all working for you. And you are a true owner of the productivity of the United States or any country that you're investing in. $300 into five ETFs monthly. Uh, just a reminder, this is not financial advice. I'm just providing this information to help you guys understand investing. If you enjoy this video, please like it and also subscribe to my channel. So the first ETF, and this is, I'm, I'm just gonna list them in the order of how well they're performing this year, okay? The number one performer is VGT, which is the Vanguard Information Technology ETF. And uh, this was somewhat of a surprise to me because, um, you know, through the end of last year, you know, tech stocks had just become, they just been crushed and lost a lot of their value. And there was no knowing for sure that during this year, tech stocks would do very well. But most of my portfolio is actually value oriented or small cap stocks. And so uh, I invested in this particular ETF because I just wanted to have some exposure to the tech sector because I thought because these stocks had been so beaten down and crushed in 2022, I thought they were somewhat um, low priced or they were attractively priced. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to invest in these companies at pretty low prices. So VGT, Vanguard Information Technology ETF, information technology 7.6%. Then the Avantis US Small Cap Value ETF. So this is my small cap ETF focused on value, returned 7.37%. And this is kind of a surprise. I felt like I was taking kind of a risk with this ETF. I'd never invested in a small cap value ETF, which seems very specific, but I'm really glad I invested in it when I did because this is quite a return for just three weeks. Then the number three holding in terms of the return is VB, which is the Vanguard small cap ETF, and that's returned 7.28%. Number four is VTV. Now this is interesting. The first three have been very strong performers. Now what surprises me a little bit is how poorly in comparison these last two have performed. VTV is the Vanguard value ETF. So this is up 1.81%, which is you know not a bad return. Hey, it's positive. Do you remember last year when all the returns were negative? So this is amazing uh, that this ETF is positive, but 1.81 is uh, much less in the positive territory than the other ETFs. And finally, the number five ETF is VHT, which is the Vanguard Healthcare ETF, and that is 0 0.50 positive percent. So 0.50, half a percent. And, you know, 
it's funny. Sometimes you'll look at your returns and you'll go, oh, you know, I shouldn't have invested in those last two. If I just stuck and put everything in the top three, I would do so much better. But, you know, the way I look at it, because I've been investing for a long time, is you actually appreciate the ones that don't go up with the market, like this uh, Vanguard Value ETF and the Vanguard Healthcare they're lagging the market and that just means that most of the money right now is going into the tech ETF and these small cap ETFs and perhaps not into large value companies or healthcare but i like having investments in the in these two sectors especially i feel like they give you like a what is it? It's kind of like a flotation device, you know, in the airplanes when, when things hit the water, when, when, when you know what hits the fan, it's nice to have something to keep your portfolio afloat. And I think that the value and the healthcare are sectors that are very durable, that are not going to be as affected by the ins and outs and ups and downs of the daily stock market movements. I think these are going to be solid flotation devices for this portfolio. And it's okay that they're not up a lot so far this year because I'm looking at this slice in time, you know, like January of this year or February or March. But one month is nothing, you know, even five months or six months is nothing, even a year for an investor like you or like me who's in this for the next 10 years, the next 20 years, the next 30 years or beyond, you know, what happens in a month is irrelevant. It's like grains of sand on a beach, all right? They're not, every individual grain of sand is not the beach, they're just little parts of it. So anyways, uh, those last two ETFs, the performance is not that fantastic this year, but it doesn't really matter, it's all part of the overall portfolio. The overall returns of this portfolio, about four and a half, and this compares to the Vanguard 500 index, which has returned 3.92% so far this year. So my portfolio is uh, slightly ahead of the market, but by such a small amount, it really is irrelevant. And um, yeah, so this is my update for you guys. Um, just wanted to kind of be consistent here. I don't know if I'm going to be updating this every week. That seems like a little more than is necessary. But I felt like it's kind of instructive and exciting to look at this portfolio just a few weeks into things and sort of see that what was sort of a dream of mine to have this ETF challenge a few weeks ago is now reality. And we've got some real returns and some pretty decent returns to show for all the kind of thought and work and ideas and research that went into making this five ETF portfolio. So I just wanted to kind of go over what I think sets this channel apart. And this is not anything that I thought of on my own. In fact, it's really hard when you're creating a investment channel or a you know YouTube channel to really see what makes what you're doing unique or special because you're too close to it. You know, you're just sharing, I'm sharing my ideas with you guys, but I don't know whether or why you guys watch. So I've gotten a little feedback from people who've watched these videos. And so, you know, I have life experience as a real investor. I've been doing investing since I was in my 20s and that's several decades of investing. And so for those, guys, those of you guys watching this who are wondering, you know, oh man, should I be investing now? And you know, everyone's talking about the stock market being, you know, very volatile and about inflation and about interest rates. And it's, you know, seems like really complicated and scary. And so um, I, like I said earlier, I'm not here to give you advice. And you should never listen to the advice of anybody on YouTube or anywhere. You, you should just do your own learning and invest because things make sense to you. But I want you to see that I'm investing, that you can see there's another person who's been doing this for a long time, who has a reasonable amount of success as an investor, and I'm not scared away by the current economy and by the stock market. And I think that's a useful thing for people who are watching this and wondering, you know, should I invest or should I not? You have to make up your mind for yourself, but you can see that every month, Come hell or high water, I never use that expression. What, what is high water? Is that like a flood? <laughs> well, anyways, every month I'm investing 
And I guess if I were to give you one kind of take home message about my approach, it's that this monthly process of putting some money in the market every, every month is so useful to me because when I don't do this, I tend to just hesitate. You know, you, you dawdle, you just think, well, maybe later, maybe when things get, you know, more comfortable and it's sunnier and people are happier and the market's going up, then I'll invest. But by then things are too expensive. And by then the market's gone so high up that nothing's a bargain anymore and you're paying really high prices. So I just, I want to share with you that what makes this easy is it takes the emotion out of investing. I'm not investing because I feel this way or I feel that way, or I think this, or I think that I'm investing because when the first of the month rolls around, that's when I make my investments. And taking the emotional part out of investing is really, in my view, the only way to go. You know, I was thinking about the word transparency because somebody had mentioned they like my transparency. I feel like that's the least I can do for you guys is if I'm saying that I'm investing this much money, you know, into each ETF every month, I feel like I should show you that so you can see that, you know, and this is, by the way, this is not funny money that's, you know, given to me or that is just some play money. This is money that I'm earning through the work that I do each week and I deposit my checks into my checking account and then I just transfer over into my brokerage so that I'll have enough money to make these investments. But this is money that I need, okay? This is money that I am gonna be depending on, you know, maybe five years, seven years, 10, 20, whatever, 30. And so uh, I do this because I'm not wasting money on buying, you know, a car that I don't need right now or going on some, you know, cruise or vacation or just, you know, eating out and wasting money on stuff. It's not that I don't eat out. Uh, I just spend far less money on crap I don't need than a lot of the people I know. And not a judgment, just I wanna make sure I can make these investments. And my friends who are out you know, partying and living the high life, they, um, they're also a lot less sure and they're worried about what happens if you know, they lose their job or get laid off. But I don't have that worry because you know, building the foundation now. So transparency, I love that word. I actually uh, looked it up a little earlier. I also love the word translucence. Translucent means, comes from a Latin root, means shining through. Trans is through or across, and lucent is light. And I just like that shining light through things. It works for photography where we're, you know, photographing light. Um, and we're shining light through my portfolio and through what I'm talking about here so that you know that what I'm talking about is real, it's legit, and I like to just show you screenshots of my account so you can see if in fact things are up or if they're down. There's a joke I heard just, I think it was yesterday. I should not have tried reciting this joke without practicing. Uh, why didn't the photon have any carry-on luggage? Because he was traveling light. I'm in it for the long term, okay? You know, I have experience with markets. Like I said, this experience is not something that you can buy or get in any other way through just, than just surviving as an investor. So I have survived a lot of time in the market and I have done it in an unemotional way, just treating this as a business-like thing and it works over time. And so I just want you guys to know that. I'm in it for the long term, just like some of you guys. And, um, you know, I also got this feedback where a lot of YouTubers say stuff like, you know, hey, if you start investing in your 20s and you just put this much in, then by the time, you know, you're 60 or 70, you're going to have all this money. And, you know, a lot of the people who watch these videos are not maybe in their 20s or 30s. And it's really discouraging to hear that you should have started in your 20s if you wanted to have a lot of money. But... Um, my experience is, you know, sure, it's great to get in very early, but even if you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s, it doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent with it. Um, and so I just am here to encourage people not to feel like you missed the boat just because you didn't start investing in your 20s or 30s. Um, I think that a lot of the advice or ideas given freely on YouTube, you kind of got to sift through it and realize that 
Um, this is kind of, some of it is generic and it's based on what people see or hear or read, but don't give up or be discouraged just because the advice says you should start when you're, you know, a 20 year old. Maybe you didn't learn about investing until you were a little bit older and you're taking your time and there's nothing wrong with that. Some of the people watching this are younger, and I remember when I was in my 20s, this is funny, I went to a bank to set up an account when I first moved to Seattle, and I remember the guy sitting, you'd actually go into a bank and talk to a banker back in the day, and I remember the guy mentioned something to me about setting up a retirement account, and I remember just looking at him like, are you crazy? I was like, I haven't even gotten my first job yet in the city. I, like... I don't have an apartment. Retirement is the last thing I'm thinking about. So I just think it's funny, you know, when you're young, you can never imagine being older. And then when you get older, you're just like, oh, I should have done this when I was younger. What I'm doing is kind of demystifying investment for you. Some of the videos I see, I hear people talking on YouTube about like, oh yeah, this you know month I'm putting you know $20,000 into this, or I'm selling covered calls on this, or, if I were watching this video and I was watching some YouTuber talk about having $20,000 or $50,000 to put into this stock or that stock, I would feel like so disconnected from reality. You know, watching that, I'd be like, yeah, but that's not my life. Like, <laughs> I'm here to demystify investing and show you that like in this ETF challenge that I'm doing, we're talking like $300 over the course of this year. I think there's a really good chance that some of these accounts, these ETFs, will be worth thousands of dollars. And that's not magic. That's just uh, having a plan and being consistent. So $300 for January. And then in another you know, 10 days or so, it'll be the start of February, and I'll just do $300 again into each of these accounts. So anyone watching this, I'm thinking, you know, you don't have to have that much. I know 300 bucks is a lot of money, but it doesn't matter if you have $50 a month to invest or $100 a month, that's still good. That's still building your assets. It's building your wealth. And it sure is a hell of a lot better than going into debt. You know, I think I heard the stat that like 30% of the people in America have like $6,000 in credit card debt. So all those people are actually in negative. They're owing money. And so even if you are just going into the positive, if you've erased your credit card debt and you're just going into the positive 50 a month, that's pretty awesome. No big hurry to start investing. I know there seems like this sense of urgency, like, oh, you've got to invest now, but you know, uh, there's no hurry. So I think each and every one of you guys who's watching this should just know that if you want to invest, you know, there's no rush. It's better to understand what you're doing and spend the time like watching these videos rather than feeling like, you know, you have to jump in and do something right now. So be patient as you learn. Take your time. And uh, if nothing else, I can be a good role model for you. You can watch these videos and you can see what happens in an investment portfolio with some ETFs. You can watch what happens and you can do it without actually having to you know, risk your own money in the market. And then eventually, if you feel comfortable with it and you feel like, oh, you know, I'm ready to do this, then you can do it if you want. But, you know, consider me a good role model for you guys. If you have any ideas, opinions about stuff or questions for me, please put them in the comment section below. I read them all the time. I love to hear from you guys. And a lot of times I'll get ideas for future videos just based on the kind of stuff that you talk about. And so it's always interesting, you know, the comments below generate a interesting dialogue for all of us. Also, you know, if you're investing now, please let me know in the comments the ticker symbol of whatever stock interests you or whatever ETFs are interesting to you, whether you've already started investing or you're just planning on it. I, I find it like really cool to know something about you guys who are watching these videos. So just in the comment section, real easy, just type out the ticker or something and you know, let me know, you know what interests you, why you like it. I hope you guys have an awesome week. I'm so thankful to have you guys as my viewers. It always makes me happy to see you guys in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video.